Hello YouTube, my name is Paul, hope you're all keeping well. Welcome back to another Mega Power Top 100 countdown video. Yes, yeah, so the aim was to buy every single game from this particular countdown so I can share with you as we go through our little journey. Now whilst looking for the 10 games to show in this particular episode, there's one notable game absent, which is a flipping nightmare because I could have sworn blind I had this particular game. And what's more frustrating, I had this game many times through my hands over the years, but I failed to keep a copy. So I've got no idea if I ever had it in the first place. This is flaming annoying. But yeah, the, the list is compiled from this particular magazine, which is issue 64, August 1996. I've been looking forward to doing this one in particular because the games in this list should in theory be the best games ever released on a Commodore Amiga. So what we do is we go through games 80 to 71. So let's crack on. I've noticed with this particular listing is that Amiga Power sometimes got their publishers and their developers the wrong way around, or in fact got them wrong completely. Because this particular game here I know wasn't released by Core Design. So Core did a long list of platform games with hardly any platforms. We just ran from one end of the level to the other, avoiding baddies. This is their finest and also the only one to feature trick shots with a football, hence the name, obviously. And that game is none other than Soccer Kid, released back in 1993 by Chrysalis. Yeah, cracking little number. I had this back on the OCS, ECS version. They were cut on the AGA version, which is obviously a lot more colours. Um, didn't really change the gameplay at all. And it came out on CD32. But yeah, I love this game. Basically, it is a platformer. You use your football to sort of get around the levels, really. Sort of bounce on it, um, kick the ball at the enemies. Overhead kicks, headers. It's pretty cool, really. And some of the objects you need to pick up, you do need to use a football to get them. Because they're a bit out of reach. But yeah, you go through multiple different countries until you end up in good old USA, ready for World Cup 94. But yeah, I certainly would recommend this game. Certainly would say it deserves its place in my Amiga Power Top 100. But yeah, brilliant game. In at number 79, we got ourselves a shoot em up. So, homage must be paid to the vertically scrolling shoot em up. Now, are few better than this curious tank stroke helicopter old bloke of a game. Those that are better, read on, friends. So, yeah, none other than Swift, Silicon 4, or Special Weapons Interdiction Vehicles. Never played this one back in the day, but certainly one that I have discovered since. It's probably one of the finest shoot -em ups on the Amiga, to be honest. Got great music, very smooth, very fast scrolling graphics, and it's quite challenging to boot. But yeah, it's a brilliant game. Now, you can see the similarities between this and the original horizontally scrolling shoot -em up called Silkworm, um, which I never really looked at into, into sort of too much detail, to be honest, in the past. But yeah, it's pretty much the same vehicles, really. Just a nice top-down view. But certainly one I would recommend you play if you haven't. I think most fans of the Amiga would have probably played this at some point in the past. Yeah, Swiv, reservedly in the Amiga Power Top 100, in my humble opinion.
It is the night, and there is time for the clack. So, in at number 78, game by Domark. As we say every year, Sue described this as Tetris, only with a conveyor belt and a wheelbarrow. We concur. And that game, again, not one I played back in the day, but I do remember it being in the arcades. That is Clax. Quite a good little puzzler. Probably not my favourite. Probably probably one of, one of these games that may not end up in my own personal top 100. But I know a lot of people do like it. And it pretty much by the description there, colour blocks come down a conveyor belt. You have to kind of post sort them into the right colours. A bit like Connect 4, sort of diagonally, straight down, horizontally, to get points. The more complicated route you take, the more points you get. The problem with me and these sorts of games, I've got very poor reflexes. So yeah, when things speed up a little bit, I panic. And all hell breaks loose. But yeah, a nice, again, another quite a cheap one to pick up. This clacks, uh, but good fun. Not really a genre that I personally like. But yeah, certainly worth a go. Number 77. Um, if Angus Dayton, or Deaton, is a thinking woman's crumpet, <laughs> the Laser Squad is a thinking man's combat game, where points mean movement, mean the difference between life or death. Kind of made a little bit of sense, I suppose, but I didn't realise this game either was the precursor to UFO, Enemy Unknown. That, of course, is Laser Squad. If you play UFO, Enemy Unknown, it is very, very similar to this. Yeah, cracking little game. One I've personally not spent a lot of time playing. I know UFO Enemy Unknown in particular, if played on the right machine, would certainly be in my top 100. So I can see why this would make the top 100 of Amiga Power, to be completely honest with you. Looks a little bit dated compared to US, U, USA, UFO, but it's still just as fun to play. That's Laser Squad. Next up we got ourselves an arcade conversion by Grand Slam, just when everyone thought that Pac-Man had died a death, i.e. just after someone pointed out that Miss Pac-Man was just Pac-Man with a ribbon. Along came Pac-Man in 3D, we could jump over the ghosts. But there you go, it's Pac-Mania. Unfortunately my copy looks like um, it's not in great shape, just about holding together. Quite hard to find actually in nice condition. But Pac Mania is just like Pac Man as it described in 3D. You can jump over ghosts. The level levels are quite a bit bigger 
in some ways reminded me of, Ju of Junior Pac-Man on the Atari, where it kind of strolled around quite a bit. Good fun game though, um, and one I think I had back on the Atari ST all those years ago. Certainly playable, but would it make my Amiga Power Top 100? I probably would say no, to be honest. But yeah, I can see why people like it, but I think by the time it came out, it might have been a little bit too dated. But yeah, Pac-Mania, again, another cheap and cheerful game. One thing I find in, in common with most of these games so far in this series I'm doing is they're reasonably priced. Mostly. So, number 75, we've got ourselves a racing game. Now, this is one of the two games, I'm not going to show you the exact version. In fact, one of them I haven't got one to show you at all. But, I have this game on the CD32, which I believe came free, on a magazine. So yeah, it's a Lam Am Chow, or to use its full name, Lamborghini American Challenge. Only said like this, it doesn't sound like you can order it from a Chinese takeaway. Oh yeah, it's a racing game of the zoom into the screen variety. A good game. It is a good game. Uh, I've got to say, I find it quite complicated though, but it is the uh, younger sibling of Crazy Cars 3. Um, again, I believe it's two player, which I don't think this particular copy is. Again, a reasonably priced to pick up. I think it's a bit more difficult to get hold of than this copy, uh, which is quite common. But again, I played it. I couldn't even get into the top three positions on the easiest track. I found it quite complicated, actually. But I know the previous two games before it aren't a, aren't a patch, really, on this particular title. Will it be in my top 100 games? Again, I doubt it. I prefer other games of that genre to Crazy Cars 3, to be completely honest with you. And thus far, I haven't come across any of them. Number 74 is a title that, I've got to be honest, I've never played before. Um, it's a puzzler, and a puzzler that I quite enjoyed. And potentially with a bit more gameplay, I may actually say it might deserve a place in my Amiga Power Top 102. It's a real-time, turn-of-the-century gentleman's club antics involving a converted snooker table, full of movable tracks, bombs slowly rolling down them, buckets of water to roll them into, and, and annoying spectators with babies who block your view. Again, pretty much a, a decent description of this very strange game. When I was searching for it on eBay, I was hoping not to get picked up by the old uh, search engine police. That game is called Boston Bomb Club. But yeah, it's um, exactly again what Mega Powers described it as. 
I've played it for about half an hour and I did enjoy it, I've got to say. You literally do have to get a bomb from A to B, so literally from the start to the bucket of water, by moving switches around, which enable the ball to travel in the, in the direction you want it to go. Um, but there are people that come along and, and change the switches who are observing the game across the table. It's quite bizarre, really. You probably get more out of it watching the footage than I trying to explain it. But yeah, quite a weird one to get hold of. Took me a little while. Um, not a cheapy one to find, but I like it, I've got to say. And now with a bit more sort of practice at it, I reckon this could actually make the top 100 listing. That's Boston Bomb Club. The next one, in at 73, is the one I couldn't find. And my heart sunk when I realised I may not have it in the collection. Especially when I realised that I've had about three or four copies over the years in my hands, in nice condition. I thought, I've got that game, I'll sell it on. Quite sad, really, when you think about it. The original, the one, the only, that exists in this universe, a single polygon viewed, 3D, totally immersive environment, bloke sim. Bloody hell. Where you can enter all the buildings and drive all the vehicles. And that is it. Virtual reality started here. Friggin' Hunter! I can't believe I don't have that game. It's gotta be somewhere in this room. But I remember first playing it on an Atari ST magazine cover disc and I was blown away by it. Even the demo disc alone, I probably spent hours playing, yearning for that particular game. And then I sold my ST. So yeah, never really played it. And then looking back at it now, it's probably quite a difficult one to get back into because it looks very dated. But apparently it's the original, original sandbox game of its type. You can literally do whatever you want really. There is one main mission quest. Um, you can pretty much just go off and do what you want. Go on a flipping, I don't know, surfboard, fly a helicopter, drive a tank, do whatever you want. Absolutely fantastic game, highly recommended. Certainly would be in my own top 100. But it's a shame I don't have it in the collection to show you. To this very day, I can believe I have it in the collection. I may even find it. I had the same issue recently with another game I couldn't find anywhere and then found it. But yeah, Hunter. Yeah. And what can I say? Next up, uh, a platformer, a very odd platformer. It's not odd in the sense that it plays like a platformer, it's just odd that it's got some really funky looking characters, which kind of creep me out a little bit. 
A platform game that's well thought out, exciting and varied, with loads of pitfalls and pleasures. And great graphics too. You see, it can be done. Even if the moron programmers on the world fail most times. Moron programmers. A bit harsher Amiga Power. That's Harlequin. Again, a game I never had back in the day. The graphics at the time were very good, very fast. Everything scrolled at a smooth rate. But yeah, I never played it. I just got put off, I think, by that. And a few of those really horrible looking uh, clown faces. I think it just put me off buying this game. But certainly is a good platformer. Um, certainly recommended. Will it be my Amiga Power Top 100? Not entirely sure, to be honest. But it's one of those games, again, I reckon I need to spend more time on to really appreciate it. Whilst playing at the moment, I get stuck on a certain point in level one. And the light bulb appears above his head. I'm not quite sure what to do, to be honest. Yeah, another cheap and cheerful game you can add to the collection. Again, a highly regarded one, especially by Amiga Power. Ah, finally a game. A game that I played for bloody hours back in the day. My friend had it on his PC. I was jealous. I hoped it came out on the Amiga, and it did. Number 71 then. Prolonged playing of SimCity. But in a fairground. Shows that it all gets a bit samey. But for the first two months it's autumn. And that's before you unlock the Syndicate tie-in hidden game Sinister theme park. I'm not quite sure what that means. But anyway, yeah, theme park. Again, very accurately described there, I've got to say. I had this game back in the day. Uh, I remember buying it. Couldn't wait, especially to see that kind of full motion video animation there. As I saw it on the, on the PC, it looked great. CD32 has a full rendition of that intro. The Amiga obviously doesn't. But yeah, it's brilliant when you play it initially, especially for the first few hours, because everything's brand new. You're setting the theme park up just so you like it. But like most games like this, after quite a bit of time, it does become quite samey. But yeah, when you first build your first roller coaster like that, it's absolutely terrific. Now, unfortunately, I couldn't play it for long enough to get to that point. But you'll see the very basics of the game in the old uh, game footage in a minute. But yeah, really pleased to have this. I've also got this on the CD32, but I wanted to have it back. It's exactly the same way I had it back in the day, really. Back on my 1200, installed. Yeah, it's a lot better though on an accelerated machine, I've got to say. And I believe there is an A500 version and an A1200 version as well. And the one I had back in the day was for my 1200. So yeah, would this be in my top 100? Probably, I would say so. As a strategy game or a simulator, it certainly is one of the better ones released on the Amiga. It's a shame Theme Hospital never came out because that was bloody amazing. So yeah, so have a look at Theme Park then, shall we? 